As someone who's played career mode for a long time now, it's always interesting when I see new people pick up the game mode that I've played for such a long time. Today I've got 25 tips that I've found that I think should really help beginners in when they're starting out their career mode journeys. As some of them are fairly common sense, but some of them are things you might not understand unless you've played a couple of hours of FIFA career mode, so I'll be giving you the head start and getting you invested in your first career mode saves. So the first things that I always recommend for everyone is to try and learn how to sign players. This is usually done by the global transfer market as it's called on FIFA 22. The transfer market is where you can find every single player that you'll sign and usually sell on your FIFA career mode journeys. Unless you're doing a challenge save, something like a youth academy only save, which is where you don't actually sign players, you just use your youth academy, then it's gonna be quite hard for you to progress if you haven't bought the right players. So the first thing I do every time I boot up a new FIFA career mode save is have a look through my squad. I'll decide which kind of players I want to keep. I maybe usually pick a team that I like in real life so I don't have to invest too much time doing this, and I also decide what kind of career mode I want to do. A lot of people always try and do RTGs or Road to Glories, which is where you start out right at the bottom, usually in the English 4th division, and you try and get all the way up to the Premier League and see if you can win the Champions League with the same team. So this is of course fairly unrealistic, but it's a fun way of playing the game. If you're doing a save like this, then you'll go into your youth academy and you'll go into your transfer market and try and find players with high potential of course, so they can grow alongside your club. If you're deciding to do something else like a youth academy only save, then maybe what you should do is have a look for the best youth scouts you can afford with your transfer budget. The youth academy is one of the most overpowered parts of the game, so it's something you should definitely make sure you're using throughout your entire save. It's easy to fill your youth academy with 20, 90 potential players, which is super high potential, who'll usually reach that rating if dynamic potential isn't broken. So make sure you're taking advantage early on, and by the time you're in your second or third season, you'll have some insanely high potential players all ready to start for your team. Coming from Ultimate Team, it might seem strange, but sometimes you can actually run a weaker team rather than your 11 best players. So you can do this if you have got a high potential player, maybe he's a few ratings lower than a starter already in your squad, but what you can do is you can invest game time in them and they will just increase in overall. Once developed, you'll be able to sell the player for a lot more money, and the speed that they increase depends on how well you've done in the training sessions. At the start of every single career mode, you'll have the opportunity to do the training sessions again. If you get an A grade, which means you did a really good job on the training, your players will improve faster, while you'll also get to know how good your players are at shooting, dribbling, defending, and stuff like that. Knowing your players is quite important on career mode, especially compared to Ultimate Team, because you can't do too many instructions and you can't add things like chemistry styles. So if you've got a striker who's maybe a bit lacking in pace, you can't just slap a hunter on him and he'll instantly get 15 pace. You might, if they're young, be able to develop maybe 5 to 10 pace onto them over the course of a couple of seasons, but if they're slow, they're generally slow for their entire career. This kind of thing I really enjoy, and I like that players do have limitations. Hopefully you find that interesting too, and if you do, career mode is going to be really fun for you. If you're interested in fun and realism, then there's three things I think you should know. You can always use pre-season to experiment with difficulty. Career mode is always more fun when it's a challenge, so if you're winning 9-0 every week, unless if you're playing as Man City, you're probably not going to have too much fun and it's not going to be too realistic. I always think realism and fun do go hand in hand, so don't expect to win every single game. Sometimes it can be fun if you lose a game, but restarting games when something unfair happens will make the game get boring. You have to take some of the ups with some of the downs if you want a fun career mode. If you are finding the game too tough or too easy, maybe consider having a change of AI difficulty, but there's also sliders that can fully change the way the game plays. If you find that AI is scoring too many shots, but other than that, the game is fine, you can just turn down the AI shot difficulty. If you think that AI is marking your players too tightly, you can make them mark looser and give you a bit more breathing room to turn around and dribble with your attacking midfielders. These kind of changes are an easy way of making the game more fun for you. Don't worry if you're making the game easier because it is always only about your experience. So don't focus too much on playing on the highest difficulty with the hardest sliders. In general, three more things you need to know is that you should definitely save regularly. A lot of the time the auto saves can be a bit weird, maybe you'll go back in time and the game will auto save over your existing save and you'll lose progress. 
I've been playing career mode for years and years, and this actually happened to me with a save I was going to upload to this channel. The MLS career mode that I uploaded on my second channel was actually meant to be a full season, but you know, I did one episode, played three matches, and accidentally oversaved the video with a different career mode. It was a terrible mistake, but make sure you save regularly. Another thing you need to know is that no matter how badly you start or you keep going, you won't ever totally lose your save. You'll always get offers from worse teams, and this is just a chance to build your way back up. So say you're managing Manchester United, you're maybe in 16th place about to get relegated. So what you do is you get fired, and then all of a sudden you'll see offers from teams like Nottingham Forest, Bournemouth, Fulham, all the other teams that will be down the bottom of the table, they all give you a chance to rebuild. If you do well for them, you can always rejoin the first team you're at and see if you can do better the second time around. These kind of second chances are interesting and I do like there is a safety net. The rest of my ideas and my tips all are focused around playing in lower leagues. So if you're not interested in playing in a lower league, now is probably an interesting time for you to leave a comment and tell me what team you're going to pick for your first career mode save. But if you are playing in the lower league, you should always try and focus on a certain set of attributes to build your squad around. You're not going to get a huge amount of all-rounders playing in League 2, so if you're playing something like high pressing, why don't you look for players with acceleration, strength and stamina? If you're trying to play counter-attack football, go for like pace, long passing and maybe composure for the one-on-ones you'll get. And if you're playing long ball, of course, height, strength, long passing and heading are all key. If you're trying to sign players that fit into your tactic, not only does it let you try new players every time you do a save, but it also restricts the kind of players that you can sign. You should also try and pick a team with interesting kits, history or a stadium. They're just about the only things you can't change on career mode. You know, some leagues have a massive amount of teams with the same kit colours. In Germany there's a lot of red teams, in Spain there's a lot of blue, so if you're playing as someone like Plymouth Argyle with their green kit, there's not many green kits in the United Kingdom, so you're going to have a bit more of a unique save if you're playing with them. If you are doing an RTG or a Road to Glory like I mentioned earlier, you're most likely going to outgrow most of your squad pretty fast. You can try and keep some all the way, like teams like Blackpool and Bournemouth did in real life when they got up to the Premier League. Leicester did it in a smaller way going from League 1 to the Premier League and winning the league, so there is always chance in real life for some of these players to stick around, so always try and do that. While you don't get too attached, do try and keep a couple in your career mode save. Another and final tip is that I don't recommend you abuse the Youth Academy. It is super easy to get a team of 80 potential players in League One, which of course would never happen in real life. Even teams with famous academies like Crew have a max of 5 players with 70 plus potential. There's no problem with having lots of youth players, but just try and keep some of your overalls realistic if you want a more fun and a more enjoyable career mode save. While you're giving different leagues a go, have a look at different youth nations because of course they all have different names. But other than that, I think the youth players are pretty much the same no matter where you scout on this year's game. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you're a career mode beginner, hopefully you enjoy your saves. Stick around on the channel by subscribing and have a look at some of my other videos if you're interested in save ideas that you can do on FIFA career mode. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon and goodbye.